Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look back at the 2023 Breeders' Cup Juvenile at Santa Anita. We break from the gate and fierceness rebounded in a huge way. He was so impressive winning his career debut at Saratoga Sprinting. And he was so disappointed in his first start against winners, the Champagne. I guess the real fierceness showed up in this race, Mike. He was close to the pace throughout and he looked strong. Yeah, came out of the gate running in this race, Dan. He gets right up close here. Uh, he looks like uh, a winner pretty much every step of the way in this spot. And, you know, maybe more important th than anything else, Dan, there weren't, it's not like there were a bunch of trips in this race. I didn't see a bunch of excuses behind fierceness. He wins this race fair and square, um, and he wins it really impressively. General partner, the pace setting runner up, finished ahead of fierceness in the champagne. He went right out to establish the top. But you see Johnny Velasquez very comfortable aboard fierceness in second. And Bob Baffert had to be pleased where Muth was at this point. Yeah, Muth got right up close. He's just going to take a, a three wide tracking trip here. He's sitting right off of fierceness most of the way around. Dan, you're going to see fierceness make his move um, as this field enters the far turn. He's going to take this race over. And Muth is going to do his very best. He's going to try to go with fierceness. He's going to try to challenge him at the top of the stretch. And he is no match. Yeah, fierceness pretty much puts away general partner with no fuss whatsoever. He's going to shrug off Muth. Timberlake, who is stalking on the outside, you could tell he was in a little bit of trouble when Florence Giroux clucked to him at about the half mile pole. Right here, it's fierceness. It looks like for a brief instant, Muth will go after him. But no, no, no. Fierceness draws away. He wins as much the best. He looked like he ran in his debut. Yeah, he really did. A nice bounce back. This is his first start ever over fast dirt too, Dan. So I think that's something you have to take into consideration. And just the, the way that he just sort of easily hand, um, handled Muth and sort of turned him away. And then the best part of the race, maybe, in my opinion, was that final eighth of a mile. I mean, he just got away from these horses. Very impressive performance for Fierceness, who has to be considered one of, if not the early favorite for the Kentucky Derby. He earned a huge buyer speed figure, a 105 for only his third lifetime star, his first time around two turns, and as Mike mentioned, his first time over fast going. Let's talk about one of his stable mates. That is Locke, who was the beaten favorite. He came into this race on a two-race win streak, having taken the Breeders' Futurity in a game performance. He looked a little green in this race, Mike. I'm not sure whether he handled the track or he handled the kickback, we saw him run on at the very end. I'm not willing to give up on him. I wouldn't be surprised if he matures over the winter and proves to be a very good three-year-old. Yeah, I agree. I'll be very interested to see what he does in his next start because I'm not really sure what the issue was early in this race. Then maybe it was the kickback. Um, I thought it was you know, pretty surprising to see this horse wind up last as this field got to the first turn of this race. I, I knew he wouldn't be up on the pace. I didn't think he'd be last in this field. And, you know, they pretty much, uh, Jose Ortiz pretty much had to ride him all the way around the track. He did put in a pretty decent late run in this race, um, but he just never was in a position where it looked like he could win, Dan. Uh, um, I still think he's a really good horse. I'll be very interested to see where he turns up next. It was just a one-paced performance for Champagne winner Timberlake, who stalked on the outside, again, was sitting right behind Muth as they entered the turn and just really ran around the track up and down in the final uh, five-sixteenths of a mile or so. Just another head-scratcher for a colt that's been consistently inconsistent. That's a, a very fair way to look at him here. Um, first of all, I was surprised. I, mean, I don't know. I shouldn't say surprised, maybe but maybe a little surprised that they didn't, didn't come out of the gate with a ton of aggression with this horse. Like they weren't even, there was no um, thought in their mind that they were going to try to be forward in this race and be part of the pace. They took a hold of them. They wanted to sit off the pace in a tracking position. And I guess they got that, Dan, but um, he never really made any kind of a serious move into this race. The Prince of Monaco was treated sort of with kid gloves by Bob Baffert going into this race. He was very impressive in his first couple of starts, but those races were sprinting. He came into this race fresh. He never really made an impression. He didn't. He did get bumped at the start of this race, um, and then they just sort of raided him down on the inside. Um, he's another one, though, who just, I mean, I thought he had a good enough position after that. He just never really made any kind of move into the race. He didn't really have that much of a finish. Um, he wound up getting fifth, but it was almost like he was never in the race, Dan. He just didn't really do that much. When you watch the performances of the two Baffert trained runners and how they've been handled this year, do you think they're just going to be better at shorter distances at three? Or do you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and grow up over the winter? Yeah, well, I don't. I, probably for Prince of Monaco, um, you'd think 
that horse is going to wind up getting turned back. I don't really know what to say about Muth. I think it's just fair to question at this point anyway, you know, how good is this horse? They don't have to turn him back. He won the grade one the first time they stretched him out. He finished second in this race. He was no match for fierceness, but it wasn't, you know, a terrible performance. Um, I don't know. This horse was so fast early on that I wouldn't be shocked if they decided to try to sprint him, but his two route races are fine. Let's take a closer look at the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner. It is Fierceness, Rapoli Stable Homebred. It's Todd Pletcher. It's John Velasquez. They've been doing this for years. This is a son of City of Light out of a stakes-winning half-sister to Outwork who won the Wood Memorial. So this is a pretty solid family, Mike, especially for, a, you know, I would say a mile and a sixteenth even further. Oh, yeah, I think there is, you know, pedigree to go on here. Second Dam's a sister to Cairo Prince, who was a really good horse and who wanted a distance of ground. So there, there's pedigree here. His overall, I know the champagne is still something that, you know, is a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, but other than that, his his two wins, there is nothing to knock about them. This horse is really good. Let's take a closer look at the prices now for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, Fierceness returned $35. Pletcher and Velasquez win the Juvenile. Pletcher runs third with the late running locked. Muth ran well for second. He ran a very fast buyer speed figure. Just no match for Fierceness on this day. East beats West in the Juvenile. Fierceness onto a three-year-old campaign. And who knows, maybe the Kentucky Derby. There was disappointment this year for Pletcher and Rapoli with Forte.